Okay, hello everybody, welcome to Autopsy Simulator. I am way behind on this, I apologise. I was a little scared to play it because I assumed it was going to be like... The, more, the, the Mortician's Assistant, yeah. The Mortician's Assistant. It was sent over to me and I've seen a few people play it and like I said, I'm way behind. So uh, thank you so much to Team17 for sending this over to me and I'm so sorry that I'm so behind on actually playing it. I really am getting uh, Mortician's Assistant vibes though, so um, I don't know how much I'm going to enjoy this. But let's give it a go and see what happens. Office of the Medical Examiner, Beatsville. Dr. Jack Hammond is speaking. How can I help you? Good evening, this is Kate Brooks. I'm not sure if you remember me. A few weeks ago, we talked about an article I'm working on. It's about your wife. I dropped by last Friday to speak to you, but you weren't working at the time. <laughs> I asked the security guard to pass on a note for me. I would like us to discuss the topic of... I thought I had made it painfully obvious for the last time. No! Please don't call me again and stop inquiring about my wife. Damn journalists. <sighs> they don't let me work. <laughs> God damn it. I'm not in the best frame of mind to record a lecture for my students now. I'm feeling completely broken. Uh, where did I leave my meds this time? Okay. Check the bathroom for your pills. So, I thought it was like a medical examiner just then. That's why I was a bit confused. I was like, why? What did he do to his wife? But, um, yeah, clearly this is someone, like, well-known, I guess. What does this say? How to break out of this vicious cycle. Oh, when you find out, buddy, let me know. Hmm. Another kidnapping this month. Another person gone missing. Mm. Oh. Okay. <laughs> the lag scared me. Can, is there lights? It's incredibly dark. Okay. Time to pull myself together. I was gonna say that I have no reflection. And get back to work. More. I've More. already taken my pills. I'm not looking to overdose. Can I brush my hair? Wee! <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, I, I guess I guess I don't need to brush my hair right now. I'm obviously already looking pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm struggling. I mean, it's not super dark, but when you've got all these lights and ring lights in your face, it kind of like affects your vision a little. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, I need can't to set see. the camera first. I need to set up the camera. Take the camera from the storage room. Storage room. Something glowing in here. This place yeah. is starting to look like a hoarder's dream, rather than a storage room. This guy's voice, he sounds like he should be doing, like, audiobooks on Dipsy. He's so suave. Oh, we're gonna love a new trap! Okay, why are we... Oh, okay, we're a doctor. Okay, I was gonna say, why are we recording ourselves cutting this person open? But, to learn... Oh, I just have to get everything in frame. Oh, well, I don't like this already. Okay. It's auto censoring. This should be fine. November twentieth, nineteen ninety one. Time eight forty three PM. Recording for medical students from the University of Missouri. This autopsy is conducted by Jack Handman. Hello everyone. Welcome to the autopsy room. Today you will have the dubious pleasure of following a full autopsy step by step. For those of you who have already performed your first autopsy, this will refresh your basic knowledge. In turn, for those whose knowledge is only theoretical, I just... I advise not to watch this after a meal. <laughs> okay, take a look at the chalkboard. Toby Chambers, yep. That's... that's a chalkboard. I'm looking at it. I am looking at it. <laughs> is, there, is there another chalk... there is another chalkboard. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Let's start. Okay. Tell students what is important in this profession. Okay, number one. Always wear an apron, mask, and gloves. Goggles are a must when the job is splashy. And in case of sharp accidents, it's worth having disinfectants at hand. It's true that you won't get ptomaine poisoning straight away, but if your liver or kidney aren't doing well, you may end up with diarrhea. No, not diarrhea. 
The cadaver is placed on its back on the autopsy table. The pathologist stands on the right of the deceased. Make sure that all the necessary tools are always at hand so that you don't have to run around looking for something, like I do all the time. In the process of revealing and securing forensic evidence, it is difficult not to interfere with the original condition of the deceased. Written and photographic documentation plays a vital role throughout the entire examination process. Okay. During your research, be patient, inquisitive, but above all, attentive to detail. Many entries are visible at first glance, but sometimes they can be cover for more interesting stories. And lastly, remember that nothing teaches you self-narration like working with the dead. So get used to that fact soon. Everyone will think you're talking to yourself. That's okay, I already do that. Now, on to the police folder. That will contain all police sorts folder. of pertinent information as to who the deceased might be and what potentially happened to them. So, Let's take a closer look, shall we? I mean, I'm guessing his name is Toby. It's written on the other chalkboard. The chalkboard that I was not allowed to look at. Okay, police evidence file. I guess we're going from left to right. The deceased was found on the outskirts of a parking lot at a gas station, where he often begged and persistently offered drivers to wash their car windows. Aw, simple guy. The body was noticed by a station employee during the morning shift. Initially, he thought that someone had thrown some boots and a coat in a nearby ditch. It took him a moment to recognize the pile of clothes as the body of a man. No. Signs of libation were found around the body. Yes, Empty libation. bottles, traces of an inept attempt to start a fire, and a scattered makeshift blanket. Okay, okay. Look through the information for- oh, okay, we've got some other stuff there. The deceased's name is Tobias Chambers. Told ya. Locally known as Old Toby. Homeless and unemployed for at least a couple of years. Damn it, Toby. He worked most of his life at the local port dealing with unloaded cargo. He was fired for being drunk and starting fights. His okay. son runs a hardware store on his own. His wife left him years ago. They both had no contact with the deceased. Okay, how do we know all That's this? it. Okay. That's it. It's worth yeah. remembering the context around the scene of a death. Okay. This allows you to better interpret any traces found on the body. I shouldn't start the procedure without right. gloves. Yeah, it's me, it's me. Oh, donuts! I wasn't sure it would amount to anything, but the World Wide Web has been a blessing for speeding up my work. Oh, right, because it's mine. Some of my one. previous cases, a gotcha. reminder of more prosperous times. Prosperous. Is this my wife? Find some protective gloves to wear. Literally right next to me. I, I literally saw those as now I walked in. Now it's our turn <laughs> to take some pictures for our files. Relax. Just want to take some pictures. Aha. <laughs> there you are. <gasps> nice. Here somewhere. Trusty Polaroid. As awesome. I mentioned at the beginning, before Stand we begin right. the internal examination, we need to document the cadaver and the condition it arrived in. Mm -hmm. We begin with a full body photo. Try full and body. stick to the top down rule, but this is not always possible. Let's keep in mind it's all about the legibility, not the perfect frame. Okay. Okay, yeah, I can't really get a top down because I can't get take a general photo of the deceased. Okay. Maybe like this. Oh, I don't like this. Uh, something's gonna pop up at some point, I know it. No? Okay. Oh, okay. Voila. I think it's now we move on to the next step. Right. Looking for general traces. Photo. Thank you, Diam. Look at the corpse from different sides, from different angles, up close. And from a distance, you're looking okay. for anything out of the ordinary. Gotcha. That's something that. interesting. It will be necessary to check whether this injury was severe enough to cause damage to the brain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we need four. Find marks on the body to decipher. Some wounds in the feet and signs of frostbite. Probably Ooh. because the subject's shoes were too small. That's sad. The boiler healed wound. Looks old. I'll take a closer look later. Else? Also got a scabby knee. I guess she's Hard kind hands, of worn out by physical work and always take pictures of her hands. Light. Poor guy. Did he freeze to death? In a moment, we will check which of our initial observations will be worthy of further consideration. Okay. But before we get to that, I need to write ah, down some basic data. Now the chalkboard comes in handy. Head <laughs> feet. Stomach, old wound, general, hand. Okay. Get started. Perform the autopsy. Okay, here we go. 
See, I don't think I'm a squeamish person, but then it comes to stuff like this and I start to think, actually, you know what, I think maybe I kind of am a, a, a tiny bit. <laughs> Scissors. Scalpel. Syringe. Magnifying glass. Knife. Yeah. Knife. I guess I forgot to clean the knife. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you forget to clean the knife? That's kind of... Oh, God. Ugh. Why would you put the knife back in all dirty? What do you mean you forgot to clean the knife? Isn't that kind of like... I mean, I guess they're, they're dead. It's not like they're going to get an infection or anything, but still. Um, okay, what do I do? Is this... Start our autopsy. Oh. Personal information. Ah, okay. Uh, the deceased was unclothed. Date. Okay. As you can see, I note everything down on previously prepared forms. Right. Every pathologist must keep a detailed record of every step of the autopsy. Right. This not only allows you to track the procedure, but also collates the results together, upon which you may back up your conclusions. So, enough of the boring prep. Let's begin by taking a closer look at the spots I photographed earlier. For this, you're going to need a magnifying glass. A magnifying glass? Inspect the areas of concern with a magnifying glass. Tap. Tools. Aha! Which spot first? Let's go ahead. I can confirm the presence of ecchymosis on the deceased man's head. I don't know what that means. The appearance indicates the intravital nature of the wound. Add alcohol, which I can clearly smell. And this was an accident just waiting to happen. Right. Okay. So he hit his head from... Being drunk, I guess? It looks like a burn mark. No doubt painful, but it's not pertinent for this case. Okay, so that's not important. Eh. Here we can see frostbite on the fingertips. We can tell by the characteristic skin color. Mm -hmm. Frostbite, yeah. Show me your toes! Definitely a painful mix of frostbite, <laughs> abrasions, and blisters. Old Oof. Toby had been wearing shoes too small for him for a very long time. That's if he wore any at all. So Ouch. far, there are a lot of superficial wounds, but only one serious injury to the head. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to our notes. Okay. How do I do that? Yes? First, Good I mark the location of the entries ah. and make notes for each one. So, uh, one the on head wound. Head. Definitely an important clue. This is something we'll investigate first. Okay, Even though this type of wound didn't contribute to the deceased's death, we're, we're not uh, in frost if one. Toby's body was cold for a prolonged period. The frostbite could have resulted from the body's defense reaction. The safety of the internal organs is more important than fingers, nose, or ears. As you can see, we don't have much to go on. Mm -hmm. Let's write down mm -hmm. what preliminary causes of death we can think of. Okay, possible death causes. I would love to. Highlight and consider each wound from the marks in the wound section. Various types of accidents are a common cause of death among the homeless and the elderly. Perhaps okay. old Toby slipped and accidentally hit his head. This is of no interest to us. Considering the conditions in oh, which I he see. slept, his body may have become hypothermic. The nights have been particularly nasty lately. We will check if there are any signs of freezing internally. Right, okay. Since the deceased clearly smelled of alcohol, I'll add alcohol poisoning to our list. Right, okay. So he's either... It's either a mixture of all three, like he's, he's had too much alcohol fallen over in his head and then the he's also then got f like frozen to death because he's just not been able to move but it's definitely a factor put down the clipboard and continue the autopsy okay. we still have one thing left from the basics rigor mortis rigor mortis confirm rigor mortis ex examination well, okay we take our deceased by the hand uh-huh gradually we raise it Well, I don't like those sounds. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There, I think. There? No? Can I go all the way up? Did I? I think I did that wrong. <laughs> oh, I think I got to it. Ah, I gotta follow it! Okay, okay. Now let it go. As you can see, the hand falls loose. What's the conclusion? Death must have occurred more than 72 hours ago. The police information appears correct. So I think, does that mean he's not got rigor mortis? Because it doesn't rigor mortis mean that you can't, like it's all stiff. So, okay, so what they're saying is it was soon enough that rigor mortis hasn't set yet. Okay. Head trauma seems the most promising, so we'll start there. With this, 
<laughs> I need an oscillating saw. Yeah. Okay. Select the skull saw and open cranium. Okay. How gory is this gonna be? The cut is made from ear to ear. Huh? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Skin and the top of the skull. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Brain analysis. Okay. The that's the brain. <laughs> we can see that the brain's cerebral gyri in both brain. hemispheres are brain. symmetric. Brain. The brain looks good. Let's take a cross section. That's a good look of brain right there. <laughs> Leave the body. Okay. Some pathologists prefer to examine organs without removing them. However, for me, it's much more convenient to examine them on a board, which we'll do now. Okie dokie. Dissect the brain on the cutting board. Mmm, delicious. Oh, it looks really small now. What, with the, the thing that Holding I didn't wash? Holding a long, narrow blade knife in the dominant hand, we slowly <laughs> cut the cranial nerves on both sides. Oh. All the time, pulling the brain towards us. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. Luckily, I'm too so busy far, watching so this. Good. <sighs> the hematoma uh. seems to have had no effect on the brain. I mean, Hannah will like to be in his element right now. But to proceed to the internal examination of the other organs. Mm -hmm. I grab a scalpel from my kit. Scalpel! The incision should be in the shape of a letter Y. We use a deep cut to reach all the way to the ribs oh, round the and belly to button. penetrate the abdominal wall. Excuse me, excuse me, sir. Sorry. Now we peel back and separate the skin. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. I won't let me. Un Ooh, okay. Ooh, now okay we need to remove the ribs. We'll need the loppers for this. <laughs> okay, loppers. What the freaking hell's a lopper? Okay. Yeah, what's this? Mm -hmm. Quite a satisfying crunch. Oh, anyway. stop, stop. After stop. removing the cartilage tissue, we instantly notice two things. Firstly, there is no congestion of the internal organs. This mm -hmm. means that although the deceased was hypothermic, it didn't kill him. Secondly, the deceased smoked like a chimney. So, oh, yeah, look at those we lungs. should take a closer look at those lungs. We can see widespread black and tarry deposit. Despite the tragic condition of the lungs, they are not the cause of death. Alice smoked too. It didn't kill her, but... <clears throat> uh, what was I talking about? L lungs. Y yes. Advanced inflammation. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Gross. But didn't kill him. Okay, select syringe, obtain three samples for toxicology. Specifically three. From the eye, the heart, and the bladder. I'm okay. interested to see the concentration of alcohol. Five milliliters oh. from the left ventricle should do it. Whoop. One. Vitreous humor okay. analysis is very useful in indicating long-term alcohol Ooh, abuse. I'm so glad it didn't zoom in on his eye with a needle going in it. And from the bladder, we draw about 10 milliliters of fluid. Okay. Cool, now we cool. take our samples to the centrifuge. But before centrifuge. I do that, I need to find my notebook. My dyscalculia means that I always double check the settings. Uh, retrieve notebook from office. Okay. <laughs> please excuse me while I run and fetch it. Oh yes, I forgot we're talking. <laughs> Hello. Yes, please ignore the gagging sounds. <laughs> it's my first day. This whole thing is covered in stains. I should check this out under the microscope sometime. No, just stop touching it with your gross autopsy hands. 15, yes. 70%. Okay, there we go. let's roll. Go! Do it. Oh, there we go. It's the only thing. Whee! Hello, everyone. Send for you. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, gosh. I freaking knew it. I freaking knew it. I 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 knew something creepy was gonna happen. Ooh. Should I? Should I? Oh. Where were we? Okay. Oh, yes. 
the blood uh, alcohol concentration. Yes. Set the fuse. Let's see what we've got here. One. Everything separated as it should. Oh. Our lab is closed until tomorrow after the last uh, incident. However, considering that Toby's favorite eau de parfum appears to be ethanol, I'm guessing the results won't surprise me at all. What? Why? What, what happened? What, what was the incident? Let's I want to know further. what the incident was. We will now focus on the cardiovascular system, specifically the heart. Okay. It says I stand on the right. I haven't been doing that. I've been standing over here. I'm just going to break the rules a little bit because it just feels more comfortable over this side, you know? Right. We will move the organ and examine it closely. I mean, that's pretty gross, but good-looking heart, I'd At say. At first glance, the heart looks fine. Mm -hmm. The pulmonary trunk and aorta seem to be in good condition. There are no pathological changes that would have contributed to Toby's death. Size is normal, healthy, pink color. <laughs> oh, look at the wiggle. And <laughs> as expected, <laughs> we must now cut it open and inspect inside. Carefully. Careful. We open the stomach oh, along geez. the greater curvature, from the heart to the pyloric end. Okie doke. No, not the oh. meat duck. I already feel like there's something left inside. Is this going to be sort of like an autopsy of Jane Doe situation where we start finding weird stuff inside his body? Oh god, this is like one of those... What's it called? Those like stuff, those like metal... Remember it's like a metal thing and you got to get it along the wire but you can't touch the wire otherwise okay. it just goes... <gasps> amount of gas. Small yes. amounts of yellow, grayish food content resembling some kind of meat. Mm -hmm. Either our deceased hadn't eaten in days or the bulk of his stomach had already found a way out. Looks like I'll have to find the missing contents. I gotta check his butt. I gotta check his poops. Intestines. Uh, there are two ways here. One is obvious. <clears throat> and the other is... It couldn't have been suffocation, could it? I'll add this to the list and move on to the deceased's neck. Suffocation? Why? At first glance, the trachea looks normal. Same result as with wah, the stomach. Wah, wah, wah. The external inspection wah. doesn't tell us anything. <laughs> this time we'll cut on a tray. Okay. Sorry, I'm having too much fun with the body parts. While cutting such a small organ as the trachea, we must make a precise incision. Oh, okay. On the oh, on the metal tray. Oh, yes, right. I see. Oh, I see. You want a to tray. To be able to cut with the very tip of the blade, we must hold the scalpel as we would a pen. Okay. Ugh. And after careful examination and deduction, we've got it. A clogged trachea. It's time to summarize the whole thing. Oh, wait. He threw up? I think he might have choked to death. Oh, appropriate manner of death. Uh, natural? Natural death? Uh, accidental? And now it's all clear. Okay. The death was suffocation. Now, Write your signature. Sink. The mystery uh, is solved. But for us... Uh. This is not the end. First, the dead body needs to be cleaned up. Nice. There you go. I, I did write my thing. There we go. That's so cool. I didn't know I was going to actually be able to write my name at the bottom. I like that. Okay. For this, we will need to close the body and grab the needle. Close First, body. we unroll the skin flaps. Unroll skin flaps. Skin flaps unrolled. And then, we sew the deceased back up. Needle. Needle. I'm using the baseball stitch technique. This stitching method is very strong and quick to do. Oh, I hate you, you cheat up. Whoa, I'm so fast. Look at me go. Oh, wow. Eve. Oh, wow. <laughs> the speed of this guy. Okay. Beautiful. A beautiful. <laughs> Leave body. Sorry, I'm Now we say you. goodbye to the deceased and put Bye, them safely Toby. in the fridge, ready for the next stage of their journey. Put him in the fridge, ready for Hannibal Lecter in the morning. Oh. God, I'm tired. Good night, Toby. I'll drop these samples off at the lab on the way to the bar. Should I be turning this off? Because we're finished, right? We're just going to leave this rolling all night? Okay. But we might catch us some spookies goings ons. Ah, oh, here we go. Ooh. I told you. Oh, wait. Oh no, oh no, I, I thought we were just watching. I don't want to move. Ah, oh. Okay, is this my wife? Ah! <sighs> I hate skeletons. Oh. 
Hello. <laughs> Oh, okay, sorry. He man! <laughs> Until we meet again! Cool, 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 cool. Ah! Oh, okay. Sorry. So, sorry, Skeletor. Oh, that's a lot of skulls. Oh no! Bye, Woody! Eddie! Eddie! It's like Toy Story if uh, there's a horror movie. <laughs> 